Hey, it's Steve and welcome back. Now, hopefully you got that not so subtle hint at the beginning of this video that it's about two things, simplicity and fiber lasers. Now, the reason I'm bringing these two things together is because I get asked quite often by people who are really just getting started. They may have a side hustle that they're, that's starting to take off or they, they have a business, but it's really not, not a million dollar a year business yet. So they ask what kind of fiber laser they should buy. I don't have budget. I just need something that can do maybe some metal engraving. And in this video, what I want to do is kind of answer that question in a couple of ways. And I'm going to look at two fiber lasers. The first one is going to be this Com Marker B4. It's a 20 watt laser, priced reasonably well. And it does everything you're going to need to do from, from a, an engraving perspective. The second one is this F1 Ultra. It's a brand new laser from Xtool and uh, it, it does a whole lot more, but it comes with a bigger budget. And I'll talk about why you might still want to consider that. I'll also talk about some of the specifications of both of these. The price obviously is a big deal. Safety is another factor, which, which of these is maybe a safer laser than the other. Uh, I'll talk about a lot of the convenience features that these lasers have and and then maybe some speed issues or, or speed uh, measurement by comparing the same project on both lasers. And from that, we'll come up with a quick conclusion. But for now, that's enough to get started. So let's start talking about the specifications. Okay, I put together a quick table here with some of the specifications for both of these lasers. I'm not going to go through this list uh, in any kind of comprehensive way. You can go to their respective Xtool site or, or Commarker site to find out this information. But I will start by saying that the Commarker B4 and the Xtool F1 Ultra both have fiber lasers that are 20 watts in power. Now the F1 Ultra has the addition of a diode laser that's 20 watts and that's a significant reason why you might want to consider this laser even though it costs a bit more money. The work area of the uh, F1 Ultra is also about 10% bigger in each direction than the maximum work area of the Com Marker B4. However, I will point out that that when I used the Com Marker B4 with a 200 millimeter lens, I found the power really degrades around the perimeter, whereas on the on the F1 Ultra, the power is nice and even uh, right out to the edges of their range. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But at with the 110 millimeter lens in the B4 versus the uh, F1 Ultra, they're very comparable in performance, and we'll see some of that as we go. Now, the thing I will talk about here in uh, is this last line, which is the price. The F1 Ultra is substantially more expensive. You could basically buy two uh, Com Marker B4s for the price of an F1 Ultra. And you might say, well, you know, that's just ridiculous. Why would you even put these two lasers together? Well, they're both fiber lasers, but for that extra money you pay on the F1 Ultra, you get a lot more capability. And it's really up to you to decide whether that extra capability is worth $1,800. But I'll highlight some of the reasons why that price is there, and you can decide for yourself. So let's start the comparison in earnest here by looking at safety. Now safety could easily be rolled into other uh, facets of this video, but I want to bring it out separately just because safety is so important. So with that, we're going to start with the Com Marker B4 and you can see it's essentially just an open platform with a, a fiber laser beaming down on, onto it. Uh, it does have an emergency stop, of course, but it is open and that means it's not safe. So your only recourse is to wear glasses. Now the challenge with this is if somebody comes into your shop, they also need glasses. So your only recourse here to maximize safety is to either buy a whole bunch of, of extra glasses at a significant cost, or you can build an enclosure for this, which is also going to be a, a measurable cost. By contrast, the Xtool F1 Ultra is a completely enclosed unit. Now it does have an emergency stop on the side, of course, but primarily what you're really interested in here from a safety perspective is this protective shell. It can be open and closed, of course. Now there is no, no uh, emergency stop if you do open it, so keep that in mind. Now Xtool does inform me that this is not a class one laser and in part because there isn't a stop there when you open the, the enclosure, but you really do need to be able to open it 
if you have the conveyor, for example, or maybe you're, you're just engraving something that is longer than the workspace. Now, what all of that really means is you don't have to spend extra money on glasses. You don't have to spend extra money on an enclosure, but also that means that this laser is much more portable. So if you want to do a craft fair where you're doing live engraving, you can take this laser along. As long as you keep that, that cover closed, everybody around you will be safe. Now this next section is just a big box of details that are arbitrarily called convenience. And basically what I really mean is what are these lasers like to use on a day-to-day -day basis? What problems do they solve? <laughs> do they actually create more problems? And we'll start with the software for the Commarker B4. There's really only two options for this. There's uh, EasyCAD 2, which is a free open source tool. It works okay, it only runs on Windows, and it is a bit challenging to learn. The learning curve is a bit a bit uh, vertical there for a while, but you, you can make it work if you're on a budget. Uh, the other option is Lightburn. Now there's two things you need with Lightburn. You certainly need a Lightburn license, but then you also need the additional Galvo license, and there's a bit of extra cost there, but once you have it, then, uh, you basically can do some engraving and you can see I have the com marker before uh, 110 by 110 device if you're using the 200 millimeter lens you would need to add another device uh, with that setting so you'd have two the other thing you're going to want to do with a com marker before is calibrate it uh, using light burn and there's two things that you need to calibrate one is the actual fiber laser and the other is the red dot the red dot is used for positioning it's also used for framing and it can be both the wrong scale and in the wrong position. In, in my case, uh, I calibrated it and determined that, that the positioning was incorrect, so I moved the offset to the right place. And that's really just a case of positioning the, the red diode and then doing a, a some small circle or something with the fiber laser and making sure that the red dot is in the center of that. If, if if you're positioning from the center. So the other thing I had to do was change the scale. And that's because when I was doing that 20 millimeter circle, it was coming out about 1% smaller. So I had to scale it up a bit to get a 20 millimeter circle framed as a 20 millimeter circle. So simple enough. I noticed when I was drawing that 20 millimeter circle on, on the laser, the fiber laser was making this much much larger than it should have been so again with some measurement and and changing the scale of both the x and the y uh, i was able to get that to the right size and you can see these are both down to 83 and in my case the the x-axis uh, was slightly different as well and that's just a case of say drawing a circle or a square and measuring and making it a little smaller uh, using this scale option and uh, until you get it right. So my com marker B4 is, is tuned to perfection and it works really well. I have to use light burn and it did cost me extra money, but it works, it works quite well. Now for the F1 Ultra, the software is quite different. You can certainly use light burn, at least for the blue diode portion of the F1 Ultra, but Xtool provides a, a completely free uh, tool called XCS or Xtool Creative Space. It's quite a nice tool and, and uh, I know some people who are kind of living and, and dying in Lightburn will say, no, no, it's not nearly as good. Uh, I've used both of these. Lightburn definitely has still more power, but the learning curve is steeper. It's much more, uh, you know, detail focused, whereas in, in XES, there's a lot of things you just don't have to worry about. And I'll show you some of them. So I have just this simple project here, and I'm actually going to use this for a test later on. But uh, you can see if I, I have two layers here, I have, I have the outer layer, which is a cut layer, and it's using the blue light diode. So the diode laser and uh, I also have this, this blue layer, which is using the fiber laser and it's an engrave. And all of this is being done on a particular piece of material, but I'm gonna use black acrylic. But in, in the case of, uh, you know, if I, if I just wanna change this, I can, I can go and pick a material uh, from things that I've used recently, or I can go to the Xtool material library and it's already selected the F1 Ultra for me and I can just pick something I want, which is nice. So uh, if I want to do this in, let's say, oak plywood, 
And if I wanted to use the blue diode laser for this and I want to do that, that engrave, it, it'll give me the settings. But if I say open this in XCS, it will just automatically set things for me. So uh, quite a nice feature and it just makes things trivial. So keep that in mind. This, there's nothing like this for, for, uh, for the COM marker B4 or most lasers in general. So if you want your life to be simple, this could be a great choice for you. Uh, same with the with the cut if if I was doing a cut but in the case of the cut here I, I'm doing a cut and I'm gonna use the blue light laser and it will it will pick some settings for me or I can go and change these if I don't like this setting I can say well it's too dark so I'll use a, a lighter setting now you when you do have a material selected you can actually highlight it and it will show you so I set the power to 80 and the speed to 10 so it basically is highlighting what it, it's what I'm going to get, but it's actually recommending this one. And if I click it, it'll go back to what that was. So again, very powerful, uh, nice features. Also in XCS, you certainly have all of the, the typical authoring tools, but you also have this AI generator and you can see I, I let's say uh, I want an angry Chihuahua since I have a couple of those and I do need to learn how to type. And I can then pick the style of, of art that I want. Let's say I want an emblem and I can, I, it's gonna generate two, two images for me and I just hit the generate there and it will go off and generate uh, a couple of chihuahuas here and both of them look a little angry, I guess. Uh, you can see other things that I've also generated here in the past and uh, it, it keeps all of these for you. So very, very nice. And the beauty is you can generate things really quickly that are exactly what you're looking for. And you don't have to worry about things like copyright protection because these are all AI generated. So that's the, the, uh, the sort of overview. Now, if I was doing something like a, a coin, let's say I wanted to generate this this dinosaur thing again here that I showed you in Lightburn, uh, I can pick this, and I've I've already got a setting that I created called called coin. But what it's going to do is use the fiber laser, 256 passes. Uh, you can see the settings here, and. Uh, these are all very similar to what you can do in Lightburn. Uh, they're just all in one place. You don't have to jump around uh, like you do potentially in Lightburn. For example, there's no way to set the frequency unless you go into the detailed settings in Lightburn, whereas here it's all in one place. So again, easy is the theme here. So, uh, so you can do that. And then uh, once you're done, you can, if I wanted to, uh, send this over to the laser. It's just a case of hitting that start button and then go over to the laser and push the one button on the console and it will start that job. So again, easy. Think easy when you're thinking uh, uh, XCS. Now I won't do an exhaustive head-to-head -head comparison here, but I, I ran a couple of tests just to show you what things look like. And I started by doing the setup that I actually showed you previously here on the uh, on this dragon in XES and then I migrated those settings over to Lightburn, exactly the same settings and I used those to uh, to run a coin project and uh, I actually did both sides and I'll show you both sides here. Now I'll start with a time lapse of the, of the dragon head and they both took roughly the same time. The Ultra may have taken a couple seconds longer but within the same range and you can see the output there and then I did the other side I just put my logo on the other side and the in this case the ultra came out a little bit better I'd say than the com marker B4 on the dragon side I'd say the com marker uh, engraved a lot cleaner but it wasn't nearly as deep as the ultra and I think I could have actually gone a bit faster on the ultra than I could on the com marker B4 to get roughly the same result but once you polish them up they look very similar. So for the second project I did this happy face and I showed it, uh, you a bit of it already but in XCS what I did was I put the engrave uh, using the fiber laser and the cut using the diode laser in the same project and both get done at the same time so alignment is always perfect you don't have to 
play around with it. By contrast, the Clawmarker B4 has no diode laser, which means I have to cut the blank for the keychain out on some other tool. Ironically, I use the F1 Ultra uh, to cut this blank, and then I had to position it, and because it's going to have something engraved, I had to spend a bit of time to get it aligned as carefully as I could and uh, you know adjust as, as required and then I did the engrave and as you can see it's still not aligned perfectly and what this really means is if you're using something like a com marker B4 and you want to do this kind of use case where you're doing some cut of a part and then engraving on it you have no recourse but to build lots of jigs and that's going to take a lot of time it's inconvenient and you're still going to run into some some strange accuracies and that just won't happen with the F1 Ultra. But you can see the results here. They came out exactly the same, but the Ultra took 55 seconds. The uh, the Com Marker B4 took a couple of minutes because I had to do all of this, this jerry rigging to make it all happen. Okay, this video is getting a little longer than I wanted it to be, so I'll wind down here by, by drawing some conclusions. If I was buying a new fiber laser today at, at the entry level, so that 20 watt fiber laser market, I would definitely buy the X-Tool F1 Ultra, and that's because it can do a lot more than a standard fiber laser like the Com Marker B4. If I'm working with material like black acrylic where I may cut something out and then do an engrave on it, or I'm working with any kind of wood, I can still work with that material with the F1 Ultra. That's impossible with a, with a fiber laser. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's lots of expansion with the F1 Ultra. You certainly have the conveyor. Both, both of these lasers have a, have a rotary tool incidentally, but the conveyor allows me to work with bigger material. If I'm doing production work, I can create an assembly line and do engraving on an assembly line with the F1 Ultra. Uh, the F1 Ultra also has that huge ecosystem for uh, selecting materials or there's lots of projects up, up on Xtool's site as well that are available directly from XCS. Uh, that ecosystem just doesn't exist for the uh, for the B4 or most fiber lasers in general. So there's a real real reason to you know get into that Xtool experience. Uh, with the Com Marker B4, if I do have a use case where I want to do engraving uh, on something that I've cut, what that really means is I'm going to end up buying a diode laser anyway, and that closes that price gap fairly quickly. But that also means you're going to use twice as much space on your workbench, and that's usually a premium. Now, I started this video asking, what is simplicity? Uh, I like things in my life to be very simple, uh, especially around work, because time is money, and things that are easy tend to happen faster. So. Uh, that's why I picked the F1 Ultra. It costs more upfront, but it will save you money over time if you're striving for that simplicity. I'll put a link in the description down below, an affiliate link if you're interested in buying one of these lasers. And uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. If you are looking at entry level lasers, uh, you know, keep this in mind. And I'll wind down and say, get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.